to me, it's what made me excited about getting up and going to work in the morning. Problem solving is, to me, the key. Sure, I needed to make money in doing the business with this person, but what really made me happy was helping that person that I cared about resolve or solve their problem, maybe a better way than they had actually believed that it was possible. That always is what made me want to get up the next morning and go back and do it again. I am a retired CEO of uh, Fitzgerald Contractors that uh, does air conditioning and plumbing service. In my career, um, relationship building is the way that, that I liked to work. So that when somebody says, go do this and this and this, we could have the relationship with them to be able to say, well, I heard you tell me to go do this, this, and this, but from what I understand about where you're headed with this, instead of this, this, and this, you really ought to do that, that, and that. You get to the same place, it costs you less money, and we could do it quicker. And when you are able to add value to the process, that was always the when I had the most fun doing my business. Ours is a family business. My grandfather, uh, William Fitzgerald, finished an apprenticeship in Dublin, Ireland, and came to the United States. And in 1914, he started the company that is now Fitzgerald Contractors. I don't ever remember seeing him without a towel. He passed away when I was six years old. I remember him as being of a giant of a man, and then I found out he was five foot six. <laughs> My grandmother was four foot ten. Tiny, tiny people, as a lot of the Irish people are. There was a man that, that worked in our warehouse. His name was Vanderbilt Graves. Grady is what we called him. He was a laborer. Had no real means, but he had a steady job. He had learned the business with my grandfather. If you look at something that Grady wrote, you couldn't distinguish it from my grandfather's handwriting. He copied what my grandfather would uh, write out for him, and that's the way he learned to write. My grandfather had hired Grady, taught Grady how to re read and write. He loved the business. He knew how to take care of it. Grady was a man of integrity and taught integrity to the other employees in our uh, warehouse. That was the way um, I learned that all of the people are valuable, all the people can contribute. They were family. I'm real, real, real lucky. Uh, I married the right person uh, when I didn't have enough sense, uh, and um, the Lord was looking out for the both of us. My wife, Patsy, she is my balance rod. Uh, because uh, there were times that I would get my balance out of kilter and uh, she would explain it to me uh, in, in a way that, that it was very clear and I understood it and um, uh, I, would, I would change some behavior and, and things seemed to, to get better. Uh, just focus and recognizing that uh, there's only so much you can do in each day and you've got to live in day-tight compartments. You've got to be able to compartmentalize the business and then compartmentalize the family. This is our 50th year. We're in our 50th year now. In December will be 50 years. We have three children and uh, eight grandchildren. Our son, Chris, is, is running the business now. He's the fourth generation Fitzgerald 
uh, to run Fitzgerald Contractors. Because the legacy that the name Fitzgerald stands for and the, and the legacy of the business that we now are, uh, are responsible for means so much to all of us. Um, we all grew up with watching our parents, my father, his father, uh, my great-grandfather, and the sacrifices that each one of them made in those hard times. Uh, and so really, failure wasn't an option. In the early 80s, business in Shreveport was horrible. Horrible. The oil prices uh, went so low. The oil bust. The oil business in this country is hurting. Four months ago, the price of West Texas crude oil... That's when all the banks went under. A barrel. Today, I mean, we were struggling to make payroll every week. It, it created a, um, a real um, soul-searching within me. Um, I can remember one Sunday afternoon uh, sitting on a swing in the backyard talking to Patsy about what I would do if the company went under. We talked probably for two hours about what we could do, what our strengths were, what our weaknesses were, and what we would, what path we would take if the company went under. After that conversation, she and I had a um, comfort level. Okay, we figured that out. Now let's move on and work hard and hopefully that's not going to happen. And it didn't. That was a, a life-changing event. I think the lesson is look at the facts with a cold view, figure out what's the worst thing that could happen, what will you do about them if it happens, and then stop worrying about them and move on to something that you can worry about. It's inevitable that everybody's going to probably have some tough times. And when you do, that's, that's often when you see uh, the real measure of a person as to how they can respond to those tough times. And Bob responded tremendously. He's resilient and uh, he treated his people well, even in tough times. That gives you a, a mark of, of what kind of person he is. Bob is probably one of the most class acts I know. And I've always been very close to Bob and been able to tell Bob anything. He listens and he never judges me. He'll give me input if I want it. If, he does, if I don't want it, he just listens to me. That's pretty valuable. His integrity is unapproachable. I mean, Bob always does the right thing. But just because you inherit or are involved in a family business does not ensure its success. Bob's investment in his family and in a strong work ethic would be a gift and a model for him to be a mentor to the young people who are in the Junior Achievement Program. I, I think the principles of Junior Achievement are principles that I adopted in my mind and in my life. Always treating people fairly, working hard, never expecting something for nothing that will pay dividends for you long term. You've got to uh, approach business with integrity.